Okay, welcome to Enterprise Database System. This is second lecture on chapter one, introduction to database or database and database users. So our main objective in this lecture, we're going to discuss about the main characteristics of the database approach, also types of database users, and also advantage of using database approach. So we start with an example of a, a database system or a conceptual data model of a database system. In our previous lecture, we explained what is a mini world. So a mini world will be any database about a specific organization, company or different organization. So here we have an example of a mini world. And this example is about a university environment. So in a university environment, database system we may see an entities such as students courses sections departments or instructors now entities can be any object uh, such as a person an inventory uh, etc so for example in a university we know a university one of the entity of a university will be a student, a student uh, learn from a university or uh, enroll in a university and program. A uh, courses also will be an entity of a university because university offer different courses. So we may have data or information about students or about courses. And this information we need to store it. And the best place to store it will be a database system, a management system. Also, we may have different sections for uh, courses. And the departments, again, we have so many different majors, so different departments, mm -hmm. such as mathematics department, computer science, medical, biology, general education. And also, we have instructors that teaches the courses. The instructors are staff. We can also even have employee. And so, again, this is just an example of a database system, the conceptual data modeler. So, so this is some of the many world relationships. Normally in a database system, uh, first, the process of designing is very important in a database management system. So we can use something like a, a Microsoft Access or Oracle, which are database management system application to design a database system for a company or an industry. Uh, so in this case, we may start first of all with the modeling, the design is phase, very, very important. Uh, if I'm going to, again, design or develop a database for a company, the first thing that will come to my mind, what type of data the company is going to store in their system? or what kind of data the company is going to generate during the business operations. So this will give me the concept of knowing what are the entities. And after knowing the entities, for example, we have a student entity. We also have to know the student attributes or sometimes we use the term fields. So when I have a student entity, uh, let's say we name it a table, then we have the column names, which is the fields or the attributes. So for example, a student may have a last name, first name, student ID, student address, student's telephone. These are the data about the student. So these are the attributes of the entities. So in a design process, I have to know all this. Now, after knowing the entities and the attributes, the next step, if I have more than one attribute, I want to create a relationship between them. We can only create a relationship between uh, two or more entities by knowing the business rules. The business, so for example, in a university example we have here, we can say, okay, one of the business rules said student can take one up to three classes. So I can have a relationship with one or more. Or we have a, a program that student cannot take more than one class. So student take only one class. So this is a business where a student can take only one class at a time. 
So now the relationship between student and the course will be one to one. One student take one class. But if you can take more than one class, then it can be one to many. So these are the things we have to consider when we are, again, designing our database. We have to know the entities, identify the entities, identify the attributes, then we create a relationship between the entities. Then from there, we will talk about something we call the normalization of our table. The goal of normalization is data redundancy. I don't want to have the same field in two different tables when these two tables are connected together, unless that field is the primary and secondary key fields. Again, we're going to discuss all this. The reason why I mentioned this is because we have uh, the term what is some mini world relationship. So what is a relationship? A relationship is something we create between two tables. So when one table have a new data, it can be updated in the second table. So here, for example, a section will be a, a mini world or entity. So sessions are for specific courses. Student takes sessions, so that's a relationship between student and sections. And most of the time, the sections are uh, the relationship names are verb, and the uh, entity names are nouns. So section, student, course, instructor, these are all nouns. But teacher have, take, offered, major. Again, this will be verbs. And again, we may discuss this more detail in our next chapter. So the above entities and relationship are typically expressed in a conceptual data model, such as entity relationship data model. And this is what we're going to discuss in our next class. So this is the example of a simple database again. So here we have the cost table. The cost table have three fields, sorry, four fields. So we have the cost name, the cost number, the credit hours, and the department. Then we have the session table. The session also have five fields. The session identifier, the course number, semester, year, and instructor. Here you can see that we have a course number here. We also have a course number here. So this means we are going to have a relationship between these two tables. Uh, the course number will be a primary key field here. And in the section, the course number will, will be called a secondary key. So secondary key field, is a field that is a primary key in another table. And the main goal of it is to use it to create the relationship. So I may have one to many or one to one using the course number as a relationship. We also have the grade report, which is a table or the entity, and it has a student number, student identifier, and a grade. Then we also have pre-request, that's a table again, or entity, and we have two fields. So this is just an example to get the idea of a database modeling or conceptual modeling. So here, to be a database system with four tables, and there may be a relationship between the tables. So the main characteristics of a database approach here we say a database management system, which is DBMS catalog, will store the description of a particular database. Example, the data structure, the types and constraints. So what is a, a catalog? A catalog normally store a data, for example, in our, and let's go back to our table here. Let's say I have a course name. I can say, okay, the data type for a course name will be test. And it shouldn't have more than 20 characters. These are the catalog. So sometimes we use the term mental data. That's data by data. When I create my database system, I may explain what course name, course number, credit hours, department, what they consist of. Here, in these four columns here, we have records. These are actual course. So one course name is Introduction to Computer Science. The course number is CS1310. The number of credit is four. And the department that offer the course is Computer Science CS. So that's the concept here. A catalog normally will 
will be the description. So data by data, the description of the, uh, the entity or the database structures. So here we say store the description for a particular database. For example, will be the database structures, the types or the data types, and also the constraints. The constraints will be maybe, let's say we have a student ID. We say student ID should be the first two characters and the four digits. So which means I can't start with a digit and I can't have more than two first, and two, more than two characters. And then next, as, as we said, the description is called the mental data, so the catalog concept. So this allows the database software to work with different database application. Also, we have insulation between programs and data. This is called the program data independency. Normally, it allows changing the data structure and also the storage organization without having to change the whole database management system access program. Now we know that some new version now is the non-SQL, which is non-SQL system. This need no metadata. They store the data def definition within the structure, making it self-describing. So this example again of a simplified database catalog. So you can see previously we saw the table, uh, student table, we saw the attributes. But here they are telling us that the student table that we created with the attribute, the number of attribute is four or the number of columns is four. So this will be the description of our tables. Now we go more detail, so we say okay, four columns. Each column, what is it's about? So the first column is called name. The data type of the first column is character, and it shouldn't have more than 30 characters. And this name belongs to the table name student. We have a course name here, which belongs to the table name course. So this is just a description of all the tables or the entities and their attributes or the fields. And this is called again, mental data. So we have what we call the data abstraction also. The concept of abstraction means we are designing something, but we don't look the detail of it. So it's that's why we use the term abstraction, which is abstract level. We don't go detail by it. So we're going to hide most of the data design of the system. So a data model normally is designing of the database. I don't care about the, uh, the, the field name, the size of the field, and uh, when, and no. We don't care about all those things. What we care is to see how the modeling will, uh, will be, which is how many attributes we have, what kind of relationship we are having, that's all we need, data modeling. We don't go data by the data type, et cetera. So here we say a data model is used to hide storage details. So which means it's again abstract and present the users with a conceptual view of the database. Mostly the entity names, the attributes and their relationships. Program re programs refer to the data model constructs rather than data storage details and this support of multiple views of the data. So again, each user may see a different view of the database, which describes only the data of interest to that user. Then sharing of data and multi-user transaction process is very also very important. So this allow a set of concurrent users. And when we say concurrent users means we may have two or more users retrieving the same information at the same time. And that's sharing of data and multi-user transaction process. Database system has a features that make sure accessing the same data by uh, two or more users, we make sure the current uh, the data is, uh, is not changed, it's robust and it's persistent or consistent. Uh, oppression. So this will allow a set of concurrent users to retrieve 
from and to update the database. Concurrency control within the database management system guarantee that each transaction is correctly executed or aborted. So the final result should be uh, accurate with uh, correct result. Also the recovery, recovery also is very important. So recovery and subsystem ensure that each completed transaction has its effect permanently recorded in the database. We also have a feature for the online transaction process. This mostly is used in uh, analysis and data analytics. So this is a major part of database application. It allows hundreds of concurrent transactions to execute per second. So who are the database users? Well, users may be divided into those who usually use and control the database content, maybe employee database uh, operator. They use and control the database content. And those who design, this will be the designers and developers. Those who design, develop, and maintain the database application called the actors on the scene. So you can see two users here. One is just a database clerk. It changes the content of the database or input data into the database system. Then we have the designers or developers who actually design and develop the system. So those who design and develop the database management system software and related tools and computer system operators are called behind the scene or the workers behind the sick, behind the scene. So database users, the actors on the, on the scene, uh, here we can have the database administrators or database designers. So database administrators are normally responsible for authorizing access to the database for coordinating and also monitoring its use. Also acquiring software, hardware resources, and control is used in monitoring efficiency of operations. The designers are responsible for the, to define the content, the structure, and also the constraint and functions of transactions against the database. And they must communicate with the end users and understand their needs. So the end user, they use, again, the data for queries, report. These are the database clerks or entry. So they use the data for queries, reports. Some of them update the database content and such. So we have the casual, which is the access database occasionally when needed. Then we have the naive or parametric. They make up a large section of end user populations. So naive normally they use previously well-defined functions in the form of keying transactions against the database. Users of a mobile apps mostly fall in this category. Bank tellers or reservation clerks are parametric users who do this activity for an entire shift of operation. Then we have the social media users normally post and read information from the websites. So this is very sophisticated. We say this include business analysis, that's the database end users. This include data analysis, scientists, engineers, others tolerate familiar with the system capabilities. So many use tools in the form of software packages that work closely with the store database. Then we have the standalone, which means they are not connected to other computers or network system or the internet. So this mostly maintain personal database using read to use package applications. An example is a user of a task program that creates its own internal database. Another example is a user that maintains a database of personal photos and videos. So we also have the system analysis and application developers. So system analysis, normally they understand the user requirements. They are the one who normally 
elicit the requirements of a naive and sophisticated users and design application, including a cane transaction to meet those requirements. So system analysis in database field is almost the same as a software field. And actually database is a software. So system analysis normally will follow, go through the requirement stages and also the design stages of any software system. So requirement will be we can use any techniques to get information from the end users, which will tell us the requirement of the system or the functionality of the system. Application program is normally, they are the ones who implement. So after system analysis, design the system, finish everything, they will give the design reports or items to programmers. Programmers are going to look at the design system to implement their specification developed by analysis. And also they can test and debug them before deployment. We also have the business analysis. Here we say there, there is an increasing need for such people who can analyze vast amount of business data and the real time data, which is the big data for better decision making that is related to planning, advertising, marketing, et cetera. So system designers and implementers, they design and also implement the database management system packages in the form of modules and also interfaces. And they test and debug them also. So a database management system must interface with application language compilers, operating system component, etc. Then we have the two developers. These are those who design and implement a software system called tools for modeling and designing databases. Performance monitoring, prototyping, test data generation, user interface creation, simulation, etc. Then we have operators and maintenance personnel. They manage the actual running and maintenance of the database system, both the hardware and software environment. So what are the advantages of using a database approach? Redundancy is one of the main advantage. Actually, that's where we talk about normalization of the tables. We make sure the table is in third normal form or BCNF, which is voice code normal form. And the uh, process of normalizing our tables in a database system, the goal is to reducing the redundancy in the data storage. Also restricting unauthorized access to data, which is one of the advantage security, the data are well secured. So only DBA, that's data, DBA stands for Database Administrator staff, uses privileged commands and also facilities. Another advantage is providing persistent storage for program objects and providing storage structures such as indexes. And we will discuss about what is indexes also in the future lectures and providing optimization of queries for efficient processing, also providing backup and recovery services, also providing multiple interfaces to different classes of users, uh, representing complex relationship among them, enforcing integrity constraints on the database. We may also discuss this when we are going through uh, relationships and normalization. So the potential for enforcing standards, here we say this is a very crucial, it's a very crucial for success of database application, large database. But standards refer to data item names, and the display format, the screen, report structure, metadata, uh, web page, layout, etc.
So flexibility to change the data structure, this is another, again, additional implication of using the database approach. The database structure may evolve as new requirements are defined. Availability of current information, very important. Extremely important for online transaction system, such as shopping, airline, hotel, car reservation. Economies of scale. Here we say the wasteful overlap of resources and personnel can be avoided by consolidating data and applications across departments. So extending the database capabilities, we talk about the new functionality that has been added to database. We talk about like uh, data mining concept, analytic concept. Uh, so these are most of the example. So scientific applications, we have a database system that is designed purposely for physics, chemistry, biology, or genetics, and scientific application. We have a database system that, again, have the features of health and atmospheric science and astronomy. XML, image storage and management is possible. Audio and video data management is possible. Data warehousing, most important data mining features are now integrated with database, whereby when you have your data, you can directly use the same software that you store your data. You can use the same software to analyze your data, to find a pattern in the data set. So spatial data management and location-based services, time series and historical data management also. And then the first decade of 21st century, we have seen tremendous growth in user-generated data, uh, automatically collected data for application search engines. Actually, we also saw how nowadays our society tend to data-driven society. A few years back, if I want to rent a hotel, I can pay cash, but today you can't pay cash. First, you pay with your credit card, you generate data right there for them. Secondly, they will give you a card, and that card has some information on it. Anytime you use the card to open your door, lock your door, data will be generated to the assistant when you last lock the door, when you open it, etc. Social media too is very important. That's a, a new technology, especially in Facebook and Twitter. They are generating millions of transactions a day and businesses are interested to tap into this data to understand the users. Cloud storage and backup also is a new technology in database system. So emergency of big data technology also, or no SQL, is also a new technology in the field of database capabilities. So new data storage management analysis technology was necessary to deal with the onslaught of data in petabytes a day. In some application, this started being commonly called the big data. Hadoop, which originated from Yahoo and also MapReduce programming approach to distributed data processing. And the goal here is to reduce the data No, when not to use a database, I'll say that if you have a very small data or the data are very simple, you don't want to waste money to invest on database system. So here we say main cost of using database can be an issue. So high initial investment and possibility need for additional hardware. Overhead for providing generality, security, security concurrency, control, recovery, and integrity functions. So when a database may be unnecessary, if the database and applications are very simple, well-defined, and not expected to change, or if access to data by multiple users is not required. You see also when a database management system may be infeasible, then we don't need to use it. If there are, there are stringent real time requirement that may not be met because of DBMS overhead, let's say that's the switching system. 
or if the database system is not able to handle the complexity of data because of model limitations, example, complex genome and protein database, then we don't need to use the database management system. So this will be the summary of our second lectures in chapter one. In this chapter, we discuss about the example of database using the university. We saw the entities such as student course and their attributes and how we can create a relationship between them. We also discuss about the main characteristics of database. Uh, we also discuss about the type of database uh, management system and the users. So again, wish everybody the best and looking forward to see you in chapter two lecture. So again, this is the conclusion of chapter one lectures. Thank you.